This video is the third in a series uh, looking at my health or the improvement of my health um, as I try to get fitter so that I can do a 260 kilometer bike ride from Armadale to Grafton off-road. In the last two episodes, I have discussed my efforts to get off the couch, um, to take some basic measurements of what my health was currently like. Hopefully it's starting to get a bit better um, and also document the process I'm going through to be able to go from where I was then to where I need to be. But with any change to your fitness or your uh, lifestyle, the, I would urge you to go and consult with your GP or your health professional first. I did. This time it's about expanding on my fitness, uh, turning things up a notch and trying to improve my overall stamina. This is a very personal journey and one I'm not even sure that I'm going to achieve. But let's review where I'm at. I've had a blood test and um, although most things like my liver function, kidney function, sugar levels, various different functions were all tested, they all came out completely normal. Um, I do have a slightly elevated cholesterol level, put down mostly to a high or an elevated triglyceride level. I believe that's come from too many bacon sandwiches eaten during the pandemic, which I've now changed for healthier cereals and black coffee. I've had a coronary calcium test taken, uh, which is a CT scan where they measure your heart and the calcification around your heart. And my score came out as 14, 14 out of a thousand. So relatively low for my age. Overall, I'm feeling pretty good about what I've achieved so far. I've just come back from seeing my GP and the uh, score of 14, that Gatston score of 14, means there is some calcification around my heart and therefore that changes my cholesterol targets. Um, my cholesterol numbers need to be much lower. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be a change in diet and possibly some medication. I'm putting in as many zone two efforts uh, of 30 minutes or more as I possibly can each week. Um, I'm aiming for at least one per day and an overall of at least 210 minutes of zone two or above exercise per week. But that level of effort is not enough if I want to have any chance of riding a long distance over multiple days. To have any chance of cycling 260 kilometers over four or five days, I need to be able to sustain zone two to zone four efforts over several hours. Then rest, recover, and repeat the following day, and repeat this process four or five days in a row while camping and catering for myself. So I'm going to have to up my game and increase my all-round fitness capability. Beechworth in the Victorian high country, beautiful part of the world. Uh, we're here to do a little bit of cycling, um, looking around, we're also going to visit a winery. If I want to build an all-round fitness capability there are three areas that I must really work on. My aerobic fitness, my flexibility and my strength. My aerobic fitness will come from expanding on what I've already done. Walking is fine, but now it's time to start doing some cycling and start doing a bit more intensity. As a sedentary worker, my flexibility has been sorely neglected. My core is weak and my range of motion through my joints is poor and sore. Long days in the saddle, hectic descents and major hill climbs will greatly benefit from improved strength. Strength in my legs, strength in my core, strength in my arms and my shoulders in particular.
Aerobic fitness can come from any form of activity that increases your heart rate and the body's use of oxygen. VO2 max or oxygen uptake is a good measure of aerobic fitness. As you breathe, your lungs absorb oxygen and convert it into energy called adenosine triphosphate, ATP. ATP powers your cells and helps remove CO2. To properly measure my VO2 max rate, I need a medical laboratory full of trained professionals. Some professional trainers can run what's called a sub-maximal VO2 max rate. And sub-maximal meaning it only takes you to 85% of complete exhaustion. The one I referred to, the medical laboratory one, takes you to complete exhaustion. And if you're like me, a very basic uh, VO2 max rate can be calculated by your maximum heart rate divided by your resting heart rate times 15.3. As I'm still in my 50s, just for a few more months, my max heart rate is 165 beats per minute. I know that my resting heart rate is around 62. It actually can go down as low as 55, but 62 is my normal resting heart rate. So doing the maths of 165 divided by 62 times 15.3, I end up with approximately 40, which actually says I have a good VO2 max. That's why I say this is a bit rough. But if we look a little more closely, VO2 max is defined as the volume of oxygen in milliliters that you can absorb per kilo of body weight. Yes, once again, we're back to that old chestnut. I can improve my health, my VO2 max, by losing weight. It should be noted that any exercise above a stroll will have some benefits towards my VO2 max numbers. That includes walking with some effort, jogging, cycling or skipping. Remember, things like vigorous gardening, pushing a lawnmower and taking the stairs rather than the elevator all count. I like yoga as it makes me bend and stretch bits of me that I would otherwise ignore. I'm rubbish at doing it, but as no one is watching, it doesn't matter. Just as long as I know it's doing me some good. I do chair yoga and also like to add in a couple of extra flexibility exercises where I lift my legs and touch my toes. It's time to turn to the professionals again. As I have said, my range of movement is poor and particularly through my hips, I have some pain getting on and off a loaded touring bike, especially at the end of a day. I'm going to go and see a chiropractor and I want to be able to understand, have I got arthritis in my hips? Is it just poor flexibility or is there some sort of inflammation or bursitis in my hips? a professional chiropractor will be able to give me that information. Okay, that was quite an interesting appointment. Um, turns out, who'd have thought, I seem to be very stiff in my muscles through my hips and um, there's a slightly inflamed bursa, so some bursitis on my right hand side. That's what seems to be causing most of the issue with me getting on and off bikes and yeah the stiffness and slight muscle wastage is due to um, sitting on my ass. So time to go and do some more cycling. So today I'm cycling along the cycleway that follows the M7 in Sydney, um, in the northwest of Sydney. So it goes all the way from the start of the M2, all the way around the top of um, around Mount Druitt, across the back of Blacktown. Um, I'm going to follow it for about, I don't know, about 10 k's, and then turn around and head back again. So it's nice and easy, nice and flat, uh, which it needs to be for me because yeah, I'm struggling a bit for breath after having had a, a week or 10 days out because of COVID. So 
so for me covid wasn't too bad um i had some major aches and pains in my joints and also had some muscle pain one night but beyond that just felt pretty crappy um, i am a mild asthmatic so i'm used to the lack of being able to breathe anyway um, but yeah that's why i'm doing a flat cycle ride today um, rather than going anywhere too far I've never cycled this uh, cycleway before. It follows the side of the M7 in Sydney and it's really nice, it's really easy. It's relatively flat, relatively straightforward to do. A uh, bit of a turn here, which I'm not very good at doing one-handed. Um, but yeah, there's the freeway right there. Right beside me and I can I've got a dedicated cycleway pretty much all to myself. I've just peeled off the M7 uh, cycleway into the Western Sydney Parklands and it's very nice. It's very quiet, um, a bit cooler today because it's, it's a 30, 35 degree day. so coming through the woodlands and through the grasslands it's a bit cooler so it's yeah very nice little area to come through cycle over multiple days apart from my bum getting sore my neck hurts well it doesn't really hurt it just runs out of energy and doesn't want to hold my head up seriously on a ride earlier on this year I spent the last 50 kilometers staring at my handlebars rather than the road ahead because I couldn't lift my head up properly I believe this relative lack of strength across my shoulders is from years of sitting at a desk According to the Mayo Clinic, a reasonable measure of muscular fitness for a person of my age would be the ability to do 10 to 12 push-ups and 20 to 24 sit-ups in one session. The current number of sit-ups that I can do is none, but I'm working on it. Let's talk about push-ups. The easiest way to start doing push-ups is against a wall with a slight lean, then a railing, then a chair, and then finally to the floor. And when you're on the floor, you can start with kneeling push-ups and eventually progress to full standard push-ups. I'm also building my, um, my flexibility and speaking to a, um, a chiropractor, it became very obvious that there's been some muscle wastage. So the muscle in the outside of some of my muscles versus the inside has changed and I need to build those muscles again. I will keep increasing the amount of exercise that I do each week over the next six weeks. Remember, what I'm trying to do at the end of this is a long, difficult bike ride. But in reality, it's not about that at all. I'm trying to actually build some new habits. In the next episode, I'll be discussing food and drink from three different perspectives. Eating and drinking for weight loss, eating and drinking while riding, and eating and drinking for recovery. Thanks for watching, see you next time.